Hello everybody, my name is Joe. Welcome to Brand Seed, a brand new rebranding of what was before. And clearly what we are talking about today is masking in Affinity Designer. Now I had uploaded a video previously under the previous branding uh, called Primeval Design. And it it definitely wasn't exactly what everybody needed because I jumped around a lot and I didn't have a, a I didn't have a grasp of what the masking tool really was. And eventually what I what happened was is that I ended up making this and calling that the masking because I didn't understand this method. So we're going to go ahead and go over both methods and how you can get two separate results for this bottom method. And we're just going to Put some more tools underneath your belt. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so I set up a new document. Uh, this one I have set up like you see in front of you. Uh, I, I'm just gonna do a simple 19 by, uh, 1920 by 1080 rectangle, make it really easy. And then if you go into the color, what I always like to do is I always like to, I just like a transparent background. The transparent background, I can make my own background if I want so on it just makes it it just makes it a lot easier and for exporting pngs i can still uh preserve that transparency if i would like so in here i'm just gonna you know what i'll just press okay because it's exactly what i set up right so here uh we are gonna go ahead and make a background i'm just gonna do the default background for what they give for the off white do, do. and just so you all know Command zero to center. Uh, I have my snapping on. So that's how I was able to just go ahead and snap it right on. Otherwise, I mean, you can go off and it won't matter. It will only render what is in the area, your field, uh, if you export. So what we're also going to do is we just want to make a circle. And let's color that something like a nice green. Maybe like an off green. Nah, that would kind of hurt the eyes. Let's do that. I like that color. And I'm gonna go ahead and center. Like I said, I have snapping on, so it's easy to get to the center. Now I'm just gonna pull it down just a little bit. And using a keyboard shortcut, Command J, we have duplicated that circle over here. Hit, you know, just helpful hints or helpful tips rather for this program. So what I did was I just moved it up and now I'm gonna shift and click on both of these and just center it up to make it nice and neat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to a little bit different shade of green, a little bit more pale. And this is where everything is going to you know, you have your three different options. So the first one, as far as I'm concerned on what masking is, is that I would take a shape, put a shape over that shape, and then I should be able to cut through so I can mask off the original shape. That is not how the lingo works in Affinity Designer, and I'm not sure about Adobe Illustrator because I primarily work in Affinity products, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. Why? Well, they're really good software for a complete, it's such an inexpensive cost and you have, and you get professional tools at your hands. So kudos to you, Affinity. Well, really, Serif. Kudos to you, Serif. I have these two circles and what we're going to do is we are going to cut this shape out of the original circle. I guess you could call it a really big smiley if you really wanted to. But anyways, this little bit right here, what is intersected in this area, will disappear as well as the other uh, part of the circle. And just to make it nice and neat, we're going to go ahead and create a letter, uh, a layer by hitting add layer. Then I'm just going to shift click on both of these and put it in. On this top circle, I want to change the blend mode. And by doing that, do you see where it says normal over here? 
I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and you get a ton of blend options. You have darken, you have a darker color, multiply, color burn, so on and so forth. We wanna go ahead and feel free to experiment with this because this is pretty cool. I like, I like all the different things that they have to offer. But for this, uh, for this specific case, we're gonna go all the way down to erase, which is at the very bottom of the scroll selection. Click erase, and then you'll see that we have successfully cut out that little bit of shape. Now, it's not permanent, it's non-destructive is what they call it. And I'll put that in quotes, that it's non-destructive. Uh, it's not really quote worthy as like, oh, well, it kind of does destroy it. No, it's actually completely undestructive. Uh, in that, what, what I mean is that you can move this eraser around wherever you like, and it'll just cut exactly where, whatever is underneath it. So Command Z to go ahead and put it right back. And that is the first method. And you'll see that it does retain that circle. If I select the layer, it'll retain that circle. And we'll get to that a little bit later on uh, how to solve that. Maybe in another video. I'm actually definitely in another video. Going back, go ahead and put that back to normal. Uh, what what I want to show you is the uh, what they consider masking in Affinity Designer. And there, there are a couple ways you can do this, um, but I'm just gonna show you the really easy way. Now, uh, all you have to do for this is just simply drag and drop like you're putting it in a layer, but you're putting it in the shape. So I'm taking the, yeah, see, there we go. See what I'm saying? All right, the shape has disappeared, but it's retained within the circle. The, the pale circle, the rich green circle is inside of the pale circle. And you could, I can demonstrate this by moving it around inside of here, but as soon as I take it out, it's gone completely. And it won't go anywhere. It won't show up in any other layer. It won't, uh, you can't use it really in any other layer. I mean, you could copy it, uh, duplicate it, and use it as a mask or use it as a shape, yes but as it stands, you can only use it within the confines of that pale circle. Command Z to go ahead and bring it back and Command Z again to go ahead and pull it out of the masking. Here, we're gonna go ahead and use this top ellipse. And this is the, this is the last one. And we're gonna go ahead and put it in as right there. And you can see that now the pale circle and we can drop this down. The pale circle is inside of the rich green circle. Move it out, move it back in. And it's interesting to think of masking this way because now you're using the uh, original subject, if you, if you could, as what is the, the thing. It's like a, it's a container, really. And using that container properly, you can you can do a lot of stuff in there, and it won't bleed out, or you don't have to cut out, or you don't have to make a custom shape, or anything like that. And it'll stay within that area, and you can manipulate it in there. Maybe you want to just nudge it over just a little bit, or something like that. So, those are three ways to do masking in Affinity Designer. Hopefully, this is a lot more concise, a lot more clear and just gives you everything that you really need to know about masking in Affinity Designer. If you have any further questions or uh, more ideas of stuff that you would like to know in Affinity Designer, please leave a comment below that does help extremely, especially in the small space that I am. And also remember to like this video if you like the content and then always, always, if you're new here, click the subscribe button. It's down there, it says subscribe, and then if you really wanna ring the bell, go for it. I like ringing bells. Da -ding. I'm gonna put a little sound effect in there. <laughs> All right, so you guys take it easy, and girls, my bad. You guys and girls in the graphic design industry, you all take it easy, and I will see you in the next video. This is Joe from Brandseed, signing out.